Yummy. One of the oldest open mic nights in York started in the Northern Wall, then moved to the Old Star Inn in 2004. That was when the open mic moved here, and I didn't think it was going to work. But we didn't have a mic stand, we started like a broom with a Fisher Price mic taped to it, taped to a chair, and uh, everything was broken. Yeah, it started off with that, and for some reason it just kept going and going, and now it's been going eight years, and through that everything else has sort of come and gone, and it's always been sort of like the central hub of everything. I don't think any band from York is afraid to say we're from York. It's just there's no one ever asks. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think the, the music scene in York is incredible. It doesn't always get the credit it's due, but um, I think the, the reason it's incredible is the people that are doing it do it because they genuinely love it, and I think that shows. It's not like they're chasing some kind of dreams of stardom or riches or anything. It's, it is about the music. And, and everybody who does it knows everybody else who does it kind of thing. I mean, it's not Leeds or London or anything like that, but I think it's definitely getting better, which is cool. It is a big melting pot, really, of different styles. There's not, I wouldn't say there's like a New York sound, you know. Yeah, the acoustic side is, is, is kind of a big market for that in York, really. There's a lot of acoustic musicians at the moment. Even then, there's so many different styles within that yeah, sort yeah. of genre as well. You can't sort of pin anything down at all. Yeah. I think acoustic music has been really pushed by labels over the past few years because it is cheap and easy to gig as a solo acoustic artist. I mean, your costs are massively slashed. I think York's quite good with the busking aspect of it as well, and that kind of, you know, the local like free pub gigs and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people get a chance to like, practice the craft, if you know what I mean. There isn't one main or a group of main people. There's lots of different little groups of people, I think. There's younger, there's younger people coming up like the Petit Mort and um, they're great. Um, Asio's Eyes. And they're great. They all hang around together, sort of like, because they, they all do, went to the same music college. The Jam Factory is a college by day and practice rooms by night, providing an opportune space for local bands and musicians. Uh, during the day, during the week, um, it's a music college and along the night it's, it's practice rooms which loads of bands from all around York go and use. The experience of having like practice rooms and stuff to go into and try things and experiment is <coughs> extremely convenient having like six hours of practice each week, like over two days. It just gives you so much more time as well than the fact that we live together as well, we can write whenever. Yeah. I don't think York's any different particularly. People don't want to put you on in London, Manchester and Sheffield or wherever if you're from York. You've got to work really hard to get these things. It could get a lot more recognised. It should be. And since there's a lot of good bands coming yeah, through there's it. there's a lot of good bands in York. Especially compared to a lot of bands that are like actually getting exposure. You don't really see it getting noticed or written about in any magazines that aren't York-based magazines. <laughs> One and Other's all about really supporting people who are trying to do their own thing in York and yeah really giving a voice to those to those events and a lot of people seem to be under the impression that nothing happens here or if things are happening here then they disregard it even though they complain there's nothing happening here. I think there's a lot of people that don't realise the quality that is under their nose really. Busk at Dusk is an open mic night set up by Boss Kane, attracting a wide range of local music talent. There's so much going on, like acoustic, like blues, punk, indie, metal, and I'm, I'm into, genuinely into all of it. It's really good. I think the, the, the scenes do like prop each other up. It's, it's amazing how many people from like the metal scene come down for the open mic nights. And I think people are just into different stuff now. They, they, they don't, it's not like you like one thing and that's it, like, which it was very much like when I was a kid. But I think um, the internet's changed that. And people aren't just looking in one section of a record shop. They've just got all of it coming at them. So I don't really know about all this stuff out there, but there is stuff out there. I just don't go out there because it's not really my sort of thing, which means there's just tons of it. There's probably more bands in this pub. York recently lost one of its popular music venues, Stereo, a small pub for small bands just starting out. That's always been kind of like the base for like the kind of up and coming bands I think in York. Because this place, the Duchess, is more, because it's bigger, obviously 50 people in it, you feel, you know, it's, it's a great place to play but it feels empty. Whereas Stereo, you know, there's a lot of local bands playing there. It's a shame now that Stereo's gone 
because uh, there is a void there. Yeah, York's missing something at the moment. Um, but, you know, like stereo was definitely the place where you'd play and you know, felt like a good night. You had 20 people there because it's just small enough that it's you know intimate, but still sounded great as well. There's only a couple of um, full band venues now, like uh, now the stereo's got as well. Um, there's like Fibbers, Duchess, City Screen, but you can't really overplay them venues too much if you're playing every month or so. There's no music venues in Europe. Really, there's no like real just music venues where I mean, there's a lot of pubs where like people play acoustic because it's suited to it. Wrong Side of the River was a concert night where bands came together to play in the basement of Bar Lane Studios. The event was closed down in 2012. I met these guys because the band that I was in at the time played Wrong Side of the River, and it was a great one of the best shows we've probably ever done in, in York. I used to really look forward to going to that one night more than any, more than any other gig. Like, I don't know, more than anything, I think. York's really missing that now, and even though there are a lot of things going on, it just shows that getting, getting people together to work together is like an achievable goal. Like, no, it can happen, it's good. Well, after we kind of lost by a lane, really, losing stereo was like the worst thing that could have happened. Mm. It had the best sound in York. Sid, who used to work there, was like a really, really lovely guy. Really good venue, but it just went. It's very easy to be famous in your front garden, and then, uh, <coughs> but like I say, the walls can be a bit of a, a, a literal barrier for people. It would be nice if the if the local press kind of backed the local scene a bit more. And I, I don't mean like they obviously one another do a great job for it, but I mean the more kind of like the Yorkshire Evening Press. I think generally everybody helps each other out, um, which is really nice. The acoustic scene is good, but it's good for bands in York as well, I suppose. But it's not as good as like Leeds and that, I don't think. So we yeah. aren't good to meet. There's not a big, uh, there's not as big a scene of people who come to watch bands yeah. that they haven't heard of. We just kind of have the same people, and it's yeah. just like a group of our friends. And as you obviously we live like three seconds away. We love York, and it's like it's my favourite place in the world. I love York, but you know, I think if you if we really wanted to try and make it and take it seriously, we'd probably move into a house by a van with a mattress in it. It's important for us to play other places. Mm -hmm. We love playing in York, like, like John saying, our record release show was incredible. You've got to play other places because then it's good to come back. If you don't have a good local support that matches the main band, you know, you can suffer from numbers. You know, local bands are vital. I think it always goes back to the right time, right place, Absolutely. right scenario. But... Yeah, York can be just as big if, if people get together and really try and push it. There's so much talent bubbling under like the surfaces. Yeah, I definitely think York could be more on the map, and I think it's is a great place to play. And like, eventually York will start to uh, break through. But it's not the kind of place where people strive you to get out because it's not a dump. Do you know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think with York it's quite like a it's quite a nice place to come from. So you, you get quite it's happy being there. When you're waiting for the waves and eyes to break in the ocean out to sea there's a lighthouse on invisible to me turning me inside